All right, guys, this is our last little bit on graphing, and we're not really even going to do any graphing this time. What we're going to do is, if we were given information about a graph, try to come up with the equation of the graph. Now, how you're given that information may vary. Um, for, for me, I'm just going to be giving you that information in kind of numerical form, verbal form, things along those lines. But you could be given it uh, on an actual graph, the same information on an actual graph, and be, and be able to figure it out the same way. Um, before we can just start coming up with equations for lines, what we need to do is we need to figure out uh, what information do we need uh, in order to figure out the equation for a line. So for example, what information would we need to write the equation of a line in point slope form? Think about that. Well, hopefully what you said is we would need a point on the line and the slope to write an equation in slope intercept form we would need to have the slope and the y-intercept. Basically, we would need the information that we are usually given, right? That, that, that those equations usually give us, okay? So, let's take a look at some possibilities. First two, A and B, are pretty straightforward. What I want, I, I want you to just try, okay? You can use either form of equation you want, slope, intercept, or point slope, and I want you to try to write an equation for the first one that has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 3 fourths, second one that goes through the point 3 and negative 2 and has a slope of negative 4 fifths. Pause and then come back. Give it a try, please. Okay, hopefully for this one you wrote y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. And nothing really challenging about this one. This one's just uh, you're given the y-intercept and you're given the slope. We have this format, y equals mx plus b, where this stands for the y-intercept and m stands for the slope. So we just replace the m with 3 fourths and we replace the b with 3 and we're good. For the second one, hopefully what you put is, this one's a little trickier to kind of keep everything straight. Hopefully you put y, equal, y plus 2 equals negative 4 fifths x minus 3. So again, the key is that we still know that this is our slope. Our x value needs to go here and our y value needs to go here. But remember, I'm going to kind of go back a step over on this side. Remember, it's y minus the y value, so it should have been y minus negative 2. And actually, if you wrote that, that would be perfectly correct. But I think changing that minus a negative to a plus is probably better. Okay, so let's see what happens if we get into some more complicated situations. Uh, taking a look at C, we are not given what we need. We are given a point, but we're also given another point. We're not given the slope. Okay, we need the slope in either format, and we're going to use point slope here. So here's the problem. We could potentially write y plus 2 equals slope x minus 3, because we have that point. Or we could write y minus 6 equals m x minus 5. But in either case, we, we still don't know what our slope is. But we have two points. This goes back to kind of what we did a couple lessons ago when we were looking at slope. We should be able to find the slope between those two points. Okay? Uh, options to find your slope. What you could do is you can make a small little graph. You could plot these points and then kind of count how far do we go up, how far do we go over. That's one option. What you also have to remember is that slope is considered to be we call it rise over run sometimes, but it's also the change in y over the change in x. So when I look at these and I'm trying to figure out the slope, I'm going to pick one point to be my starting point and one point to be my end point. I'm going to call this one my start point. I'm going to call this one my end point. Okay? So now all I have to do is figure out how do the y values change from point A to point B and how do the x values change. 
So I'm going to first look at the y values. My y values go from negative 2 to positive 6. I'm going up 8 for those. So that's going to be the top of my fraction. My x values go from 3 to 5. They're also going up. They're going up 2. So that's going to be the bottom of my fraction, a positive 2. All I have to do now is simplify that, and I get that I have a slope of 4. So, put that slope into either one of the equations. You don't have to write both. I'm just writing both just because. Boom. We're good. That's how I tend to figure out slope. Now, if you wanted to make a little plot and you wanted to count, well, it goes up 8 over 2. That would have worked great, too. Uh, D. D's a little bit tricky. I gave you an x-intercept instead. I want to see if you can figure that one out. Pause and try to figure that one out on your own. Okay, here, guys, you can't use slope-intercept form because it's the x-intercept, not the y-intercept. But I can rewrite an x-intercept of 5 as 5, 0. Now I have a point and a slope. So I can still use slope-intercept form. y minus 0 equals one-third x minus five. And if I wanted to, I could just write the left side as y. It looks very close to slope-intercept form, but it's not because we've got parentheses still uh, on the right-hand side of that equation. Sorry, that was a three. Okay, a couple other things. Uh, parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, you guys don't actually have any practice problems on these, but I want you to be aware of it anyway. Uh, and, and I may pop it on there on a concept quiz because I think it's important. Uh, so parallel lines, think about what you know about parallel and perpendicular lines and, and write something about what you know about those in that space. Pause and then come back. Okay, hopefully you wrote that parallel lines are lines that never cross. Okay, where that becomes important for us is that these lines will have the same slope. Okay, they will have the exact same slope. Perpendicular lines, uh, those things form 90 degree angles or right angles. Okay, uh, and those will have what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. Wow. That's two fairly large words to describe slopes. Uh, what I can tell you is this. If the slope of one line is 3 halves, the slope of a line that's perpendicular to it, that's our mathematical sign for perpendicular, would be negative 2 thirds. Okay, so I flip the fraction and I change the sign. Let me give you another example. If I had a slope of 1 fourth, for one line, the slope of the line perpendicular to it would be negative 4 over 1, or just negative 4. Okay? So, uh, here are some interesting examples you could get here. Uh, you could be asked to find the, a line that's parallel to 1 third x plus 4 and goes through 3 8. This whole thing here is just a fancy way of saying your slope is one-third, because parallel lines have the same slope. Now you have a point and a slope, write it in point slope form. That's it. Uh, D is really basically the same type of problem, except they're not telling you it has a slope of one-third. If it's perpendicular, it's the opposite reciprocal, so it's telling you it has a slope of negative three over one. Again, use point slope form. That's pretty much it for parallel and perpendicular. Uh, most of the time, those are just fancy ways of giving you the slope. Uh, horizontal and vertical lines are actually really very easy. Uh, let me show you how I remember what equations of horizontal and perpendicular and vertical lines are. I'm going to draw a horizontal line right here. Right, it's, it's got a y-intercept of 2. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to randomly label some points on here. This point right here is 0, 2. Uh, this point out here is 4, 2. This point back here is negative 2, 2. What do you notice that all those points have in common? Well, hopefully you notice that they all have a y value of 2. Okay, so guess what? Our equation is just y equals 2. Okay, the reason is because our x value for a horizontal line can be anything, but our y value can only be one thing. If we put an x value in there, if we put like y equals and then an x in there, that means y's and x's should both be changing. Our x's can, are changing, but our y is staying the same, so we're going to write that y must always be equal to 2. Vertical lines are basically the exact opposite of that. So if I drew a line here, again, label a few points. I get the point 3, 0 here. I get the point, uh, let's see, 3, negative 3. Uh, up here, I get the point 3, 2. Again, all of those have the same x value. So vertical lines, uh, you write as x equals. Okay, so the way that uh, some of these problems will pop up is something along these lines. Horizontal and goes through 3, 1. Well, what you know is that a horizontal line has all the same y values. My y coordinate is 1, so my equation is y equals 1. Try the vertical one on your own. See if you can get the equation for that line. Hopefully you wrote x equals 3. It's vertical. It's vertical, so they're all going to have the same x values, and my x coordinate is 3. So all of my x coordinates are going to be 3, so the equation is x equals 3. Sorry it was such a long video. Uh, try some practice problems.